I'd like to start out by taking a look at what your bodies are telling me. So your legs are crossed and you're kind of hunched over in your chair, so it looks like you're kind of nervous or you're not that interested in what I'm saying. Your body is telling me a lot of things, but what I would like to point out is what is your body telling you? For decades and centuries, we've always thought that our bodies were just a puppet that was on the string of our mind. Our mind was able to control everything about us and we couldn't really do much about it. Well, my research that I've been looking for has been able to show that there's actually correlations that our body can tell us a lot, or tell our mind a lot, of what we're doing and feeling. Um, I feel that the more we learn about this, we'll be able to control it and be able to be more mindful in the future and to understand the benefits of it and to use it in our everyday life. So I'd like to start out by talking about a study by Amy Cuddy, a Harvard professor. She did a study with power poses and non-power poses. Now a power pose is as shown here. It's very dominant and is taking up a lot of space and it's used to be the more alpha male of our ancestry. While the non-power pose is very closed off and submissive and is used normally for the lower levels of society, of original primates if you're going that route. In the study, they showed, or well, they took swabs of the mouth for um, cortisol, which is a uh, hormone, which is a stress hormone, and it's linked to many diseases and isn't a very good thing, as they say. They also tested for testosterone, and they took the different levels of that, which is a, well, it's also a hormone, but it's for being a, more aggressive and assertive is how it's timed for. They, at the end of the results, they showed an increase in testosterone and a decrease in cortisol for the uh, um, power pose and a decrease, significant decrease in testosterone and an increase in cortisol for the low power pose. This is pretty significant changes as you can see. There's like opposite directions here. And with the simple sitting in a very powerful pose or sitting very closed off, you can get significant biochemical changes in your body. Now that's all well and good, but how is that actually applied? Well, they took a psychological test at the end of it, where they had participants have they gave them two dollars, and they had a 50/50 chance of getting two more dollars, 100% gain, or to lose their two dollars. And that's pretty safe bet odds. But they had the power pose people taking the bet at 86%, while the non-power pose people only did it at 60%. So with just simple how you're sitting, it's actually changing how you react to a given situation. Interesting information, but how is this actually applied to your lives? Well, uh, university in Colorado, they had a Tai Chi class <laughs> taken, they did it, and they recorded how they had a questionnaire, and they recorded it throughout the year on different points. They showed an increase in mindfulness, positive energy, and relaxation throughout the semester, while they had a decrease in sleep de deprivation and perceived stress. And this is just through simple body motions, which is impressive, but that's like mind stuff, you do physical activity, you feel better, everybody knows that. What's more impressive is a study that was done with Tai Chi masters. They had them focus their Chi energy into their hands, and then they took pulse measurements for their blood flow and also temperature temperature measurements. <laughs> there was an increase in temperature on average of about 1.8 degrees and a blood flow increase of 80% with simply focusing the chi energy for about two minutes, which is significant because these body temperatures only fluctuate about 0.4 degrees at any given time and your body blood flow is pretty constant. While then they did the cool down where they released their chi or they removed the chi energy from their hands and there was a decrease in temperature by about 4.9 degrees and then a decreased blood flow by 100%. So it's back down baseline, which is significant. You can actually change parts of your physiological body that you can't control with your cognitive conscious brain, but you can with your body. Cool stuff. <laughs> so the last thing I'd like to talk about is yoga, which is a very commonly used thing in our daily lives, like a lot of my friends do it. And what are the benefits of that? There was another class in a university where they, could, they took a control of yoga, a dance class, and then a biology lecture. 
<laughs> their idea was maybe it's just the physical activity that they were doing, that there was the reasoning for the benefits. And at the end of the study, they took, a, well, throughout the year, they took these tests, but they did, uh, well, they took the swabs of the mouth for the cortisol, the stress hormone, and they also took a questionnaire. That's the word. They took a questionnaire so they would know how they're actually feeling for stress. And at the end of the year, the perceived stress was greatly decreased compared to the damp fats, which also did decrease perceivedly wise. But the biology lecture was it's pretty much constant for both of these. The salivary cortisol, though, the stress hormone from before, was the only one to actually decrease was for the yoga, not just for the dance. So just moving your body in kind of crazy ways doesn't actually benefit you as far as the stress hormone goes, but actually like controlled meditative body motion can actually significantly increase your healthfulness. With these points that I've brought up with the Tai Chi and with the bi or yoga, you can see how it can actually be applied to your life today. That our nonverbals are actually controlling what we're doing more than we give credit to. And if we just pay attention to what we're doing, we can actually benefit from what we are doing.